My brand new 400 x carburetor came in for the 300, um, but it's not a direct drop in because of the EPA. So new 400 carbs, like I think it's like 2001 or 2002 and up, have a brass plug. As you can see, it's been drilled out, right? It's pressed into here. And what that does is it means you can't adjust your idle fuel mixture. So to get it out, you drill a drill bit into it. I drilled off about the top half of it. And then at which point this will start to spin. And once you notice that it's spinning, you spray some PB blaster in there, tap it on the vise, and it slowly fall out. If it doesn't just fall out, you can get a pick in there, or you can drill a small hole in through it, into it and tap a screw to pop it out. Um, similar procedure to doing a DRZ uh, uncorking mod. So you get that out, and you're like, okay, good, I got the cap out. Then you find that the top of the adjuster looks like this. It's a little D-shaped thing. And you're thinking, oh, shit, how the hell do I adjust that? Um, well, I made a tool for it. This is an RC car antenna. If you take the antenna, there you go. So basically I made a D-shaped tool to remove it. Um, there you go. That's all you gotta do. I just did it one side, went in there and it got it right out. Um, that's not super convenient to adjust to use that tool every time. So I'm gonna replace it with one off of an older 400VX carb I have that's got a regular flathead in it. Um, and if you look at the two side by side, they are the same except for the head on them. And this has the O-ring to make the seal in here because now you don't have a brass plug sealing off the top anymore. So the O-ring is a good idea anyways. So that's the first mod you gotta do. And then you gotta swap out the needle because I'm pretty sure this needle and the slide is not adjustable. So here is the stock needle that came in the late model 400X carb. As you can see, there's a snap ring, but there's only one groove. This is what came, this is the needle that comes in the older carburetors. Snap ring with five grooves much more tunable because we were putting a carburetor in a bike it does not belong on tunability is key otherwise the needles are pretty similar in taper and everything else like that the epa just didn't want you adjusting it so the reason they did all these changes is to make it harder to modify to make sure you weren't burning too much gas in your off-road vehicle which i find completely heinous because that probably is so relevant to co2 and emissions that it's just insane um, so I'm going to go ahead and swap it. Now, if you don't want to mess with these two mods, all you have to do is buy the older carburetor, like the pre-2001 and older, um, for the 400X, but it's twice as expensive, and these mods only take about, I don't know, five or ten minutes if you know what you're doing. And I happen to have these parts lying around already, so there you go. Yeah, these two little screws that go in the top of the slide that hold the lifting mechanism on and retain the needle, always Loctite these in place. They will fall off, and you will have a really weird issue with your carburetor, because the slide will be opening will not be opening and the, the butterfly will. Someone's asking me on Facebook about this. So like, how do you install the 300, 400 X throttle cable without lifting the tank or having to dent the bottom of the tank? If you take the nut off, you can thread it way deeper into the carburetor. That doesn't interfere with anything. And what that does is it makes this low enough down to clear the tank just barely. And you can also change that radius right there and bend it a little bit more if you need to. I usually don't need to when I do that mod. Another thing I do with people think is kind of crazy to delete the whole choke mechanism. Uh, for two reasons. Number one, the lever gets in the way. This can cause problems, whatever. Makes it simpler. That's number reason number one. Number two is there's actually no O-ring on the shaft to in here. Now, there is an O-ring here. However, that's only sealed by this plastic cap snapping over this, which isn't necessarily watertight. Um, so I've actually had water get into the carburetor through the choke before. So if you delete it and you replace that with a cap, like one of these... Um, then it's a 100% seal right there. The other side, it doesn't go all the way through, it's fine. Um, so I do that for two reasons, to make the carpet a little cleaner, make it mount easier, uh, help it fit around my breather lines and whatnot, and to make it more waterproof. All right, guys, so the 400 x carburetor is installed. I'll give you a few tips and tricks. So it is a fight to get it in there. It will fit in both the stock boots, but there's some stretching involved. Uh, it helps to have one of those 90 degree picks to kind of help pull the boot over the lip of the carburetor. Um, you can see right here, there's a little bend there from the factory. I didn't take a hammer and I bend it a little bit more. And that lets this sit um, behind it instead of on, on top of it pushing down. And it also kind of holds the boot from sliding back. So that works out nicely. Um, the big problem everyone has is this radius right here hitting the bottom of the gas tank. Like I showed you earlier, if you screw it down in there pretty far, about two, th uh, two threads, two rotations from going all the way through. Um, it'll just kiss the bottom of the gas tank if you have your carb sitting up in there perfectly straight. Some people leave the black cover off and clock the carb over a little bit more, but I want the carb sitting up and straight up and down. So that's how I do it. And that, that has worked well for me in the past. Um, so no issues there. 
and I just test fit it and you can see where I move the tank around a lot and the tank is just barely touching it, but that's not a huge deal. Your other option is to put a dent in the bottom of the tank with a hammer, which that's a really clean tank, so I don't wanna do that. I do that on a piece of crap tank, or you can take this in the vise and bend that a little bit. Don't bend it in the carburetor, you'll crack the carburetor. It's not super strong aluminum. Um, so, and I'm not done yet, obviously. Now the fun begins of tuning it. So it's just in there with all of the stock 400EX settings. So um, it's probably gonna run like crap. I take the carb in and out six or seven times. The good news is after you take the carb in and out a few times, these boots will be used to it and it will go in a lot easier. Uh, so we're gonna go in as easy as a stock carb, but it will go in a lot easier. Something to keep, keep an eye out for is you do end up pushing this boot back some. So make sure that your boot where it goes on the airbox is sealed good and it's not deforming the airbox. Um, it helps to have the factory air filter cage with the bracket in the back. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, the, I'm not taking the airbox cover off, the little holder. That helps, um, but those cages tend to rust out after a while, so keep an eye on that cage. And if you do have to replace it, just make sure that your airbox is still totally sealed after putting the bigger carburetor in there because it does shift the boots around a little bit. But the main reason for this mod is not really power. It's to get the accelerator pump and to get rid of the vacuum-style CV carburetor because those are just a tuning nightmare underwater and stuff like that. If you want to idle underwater and be able to use the accelerator pump to squirt a little bit, um, helps, a, helps a lot with water riding and it will also help with power mods if you go to a big bore and exhaust and all that stuff. All right, so it's fired up and it's running good. So that is stock 400EX jettings. Um, the only thing I changed was I bumped up the idle air screw half a turn and I set the idle fuel screw to 2.5 turns out from the stop. Um, and it's idling pretty good and it seems to be revving fine. So I'm gonna let it warm up, take it around the neighborhood and see how it does. Um, usually they've got to play with some jets and all this stuff, especially because I'm running a tiny snorkel and all that jazz. Um, but it's already running better than it was with the CV carburetor because uh, it had some really weird throttle oscillations going on with that stupid vacuum thing. Um, and it works fine, but as soon as you go in mud once, um, those CV carburetors just start acting up like crazy. So also I still need to plug my drain. I left it undone for now just in case something weird happens, but before I go in some water and stick a golf tee in that. Um, the one-way valves are unreliable. They only work for a little while, so that's the way to do it. 